All right, everyone, Sony has just held their hour-long Road to PS5 presentation. It's a very deep technical dive on the platform, what it means for developers. We have specs. We're going to go over everything that you need to know and do some impressions at the end. So before we start, it is important to preface this by stating this wasn't necessarily meant as a consumer show, but rather something for developers because this was planned for GDC and GDC got canceled, of course, the Game Developers Conference because of the coronavirus. So this is a more technical presentation where Sony dived into, you know, the SDK, the certain advancements that are in there, the features available to developers, but we did get specs, things like that. So we'll try to go over uh, most of this in a reasonable manner. But uh, starting off the event, Mark Cerny, of course, takes the very small, quiet stage and discusses the principles of PS4 and now PlayStation 5, which are the same key principles that PS4 was pretty much founded on. Number one, listening to developers, and this time around that was the SSD for this upcoming console generation. They want that fast SSD. Number two, a new revolution, and this basically translated to PS5 time to triangle, which is less than one month. So remember, time to triangle is the amount of time it takes a developer to get usable code on a platform. PS1 was a few months, PS2 uh, a few more months, PS3 took 6 to 12 months, PS4 went down to PS1 levels, PS5 is now the lowest uh, amount less than a month. Number three, finding new dreams beyond specs. Uh, for an example here, 3D audio. Mark Cerny then does a deep dive into HDD read speeds on PS4 versus the SSD speeds on PlayStation 5, and this is where it is in fact extremely fast, much like they mentioned months ago in the Wired.com articles, two gigabytes and 0.27 seconds, or 5.5 gigabytes a second. This is in theory 100 times faster than PlayStation 4, extremely, extremely fast performance. He openly explains why the SSD opens development freedom based on loading environments, for example. So you no longer have certain corridors that have to be there arbitrarily for an environment to load where the player is approaching, right? Things like that can be completely eliminated. We got RAM, 16 gigabytes of GDDR6. Uh, the main goal of SSD, ultra fast boot time, no load times, no install times, and like we mentioned, getting rid of arbitrary things like uh, longer corridors that are just there to load the next area. Uh, 825 gigabytes of storage with the ability to add more. Discussion about removing bottlenecks with the custom I.O. Using crack and decompression, for example. This, again, is more of a technical deep dive uh, for developers to understand where they can really take their games and how they can approach uh, development moving forward to take full advantage of what the PS5 SDK is uh, going to be offering. Large external HDD for PS4 games can be used to save space, although Mark Cerny does press that if you're going to be playing PS4 games on your PS5, you might want to save your SSD space. You can use the SSD space to save PS4 games, but the ability will be to use external HDDs, more traditional spinning disk drives, to uh, save your PS4 content. Use the SSD space for PS5 games. Uh, it will support third-party curated M2 SSDs that connects to the custom I.O. So basically, this won't be a scenario like Microsoft where they are just going with Seagate and those little memory card style SSDs. Basically, Sony is in a position where because uh, these M2 drives are in different sizes, some have full, very large heat sinks, they're testing drives over time to tell you which ones may or may not work. So they warn you not to buy, not to buy any drives ahead of time right now for PlayStation 5. They then go over the new features, uh, higher efficiency, backwards compatibility, and familiarity for developers. We get the confirmation. It's a custom RDNA 2 architecture. PS4 backwards compatibility is discussed very slightly. It is explained, and that's kind of what we've been talking about before on this channel for quite a while now, where because it is, uh, they've worked with AMD, it's the same x86 architecture. They're achieving uh, backwards compatibility without having to do something like system on a chip. Um, giving the example of PS4, PS4 Pro modes, and PS5 games, it will just support that particular game the way it's supposed to be played. He actually notes the top 100 games have been tested. Uh, top 100 games is in the biggest, uh, the largest amount of playtime on Sony's servers. What they've seen is some of the highest active engagement of PS4 titles, and those are the games that they are testing. And specifically to those games, Mark mentions, almost all will work. And remember, uh, a very long time ago, Jim Ryan had stated, he's uh, confirming with the team if they can make sure that the entire PS4 catalog is 100% supported. New features, a geometry engine and ray tracing. So we already knew about ray tracing. The geometry engine was talked about a little bit at length. Uh, he actually goes on to admit previous consoles had high heat and power consumption in relation to PlayStation 4. The example here is when playing something like God of War on a PlayStation 4 Pro. The fan speeds kick up to max. It's a very loud platform. Pretty much admits they're trying to avoid that. In a, in, in a worst case scenario where a game demands that much heat and power consumption and fan speeds out of the 
PS5 coming up, uh, they're hoping that uh, basically it's going to be at a, at a minimum so it won't uh, kick on really loudly. We get uh, more confirmation on the specs. 36 CUs, the frequency is capped at 2.23 gigahertz, 10.3 teraflops of GPU performance. The CPU is capped at 3.5 gigahertz. Then Sony goes into their goals for audio, presence and locality, a deep discussion on the 3D audio. You've got Tempest 3D Audio Tech. They've done a lot of testing, a lot of R&D. Uh, Mark Cerny actually spends a good amount of time talking about this. Um, if you want to know about what type of audio sources are supported, basically they're still exploring that right now. They've got most headsets pretty much, headset support in general uh, configured, but there's still a lot of uh, consistencies that they're trying to work through with so many different varying consumer products. They're also currently working on t regular TV sound, uh, surround sound systems, things like that. Uh, he then mentions HRTF profiles can be uh, specifically customized. Basically, you'd be uh, sending your profile to Sony so they can hone in on your best experience. They don't talk too much about what that will necessarily be. It sounds like they're still trying to figure that out themselves. But for the most part, um, there's a lot more detail that can go into these specific things, but essentially that was everything that was announced during this hour-long deep dive technical presentation. We did not see the controller, we did not see the console. Remember, this was for GDC, the Game Developers Conference. And I had even tweeted out um, the night prior to this because Sony thankfully sent out a little note on Twitter saying, hey, this is what time we'll be doing this event. This was planned for GDC, and this is very much a GDC presentation. In fact, it's called The Road to PS5, and Sony held the same thing. Well, really, Mark Cerny did this, I think, personally at Game Lab 2013, where it was called The Road to PS4. That was about a 20-minute conversation, and the PS4, I believe, was either already out or a few months before coming out, but he had ba basically, I think it was before PS4 came out, now that I think about it, but uh, he explained The Road to PlayStation 4, referencing previous consoles. He talked a little bit about his background, because at the time, People didn't really know who Mark Cerny was, so he talked about his history in the games industry, how he approached Sony to uh, be the architect for PlayStation 4, and he didn't even note that he was the architect for PlayStation Vita as well. So those two platforms were secretly kind of made in conjunction. But this was our PlayStation 5 deep dive, and this was very much mostly meant for developers, like I had tweeted out, that we probably won't see things like game announcements or uh, the console, the controller. Those things are probably now probably going to be closer to June, I'd imagine. Uh, specs, of course. So it's very much sounding like there's a lot of different key principles in PlayStation 5 versus Series X. We'll just go there right away. I know people want to immediately get to that because, uh, of course, as a PlayStation fan, you're now realizing that uh, we've got 10.3 teraflops to Microsoft's 12.1 teraflops. So very much Series X is going for the top tier performance when it comes to console games. And if you are somebody that thoroughly cares about that, well, then you might want to buy a Series X. But there are definitely some key uh, principles that are much different from these two companies. And uh, now we are getting a good picture, a wider picture of what both of them are really trying to accomplish, where Microsoft really is going for that performance. And they're also spending a lot of time talking about backwards compatibility. Things like these, we can really draw some good conclusions about what, where they're really putting their R&D, where they're really putting their investments. Microsoft talking at great lengths about how they're going back to not only Xbox One games, but also 360, original Xbox, everything that was supported on X1 is supported on Series X. They're doing uh, retro, uh, retroactive HDR, which is really incredible. They're getting better performance out of previous generation games if you've got unlocked uh, an unlocked frame rate, for example. Whereas Sony, um, they're kind of just mentioning it not, I don't want to say in passing or very, but it is very brief where, you know, we're consi we're making sure that the full PS4 catalog is secured. We've done plenty of backwards compatibility discussions here in relation to beyond PlayStation 4. I've explained why PlayStation 3 is so difficult. I know people, I think people are finally starting to get that, thankfully. Uh, PS1 and PS2 emulation, no mention here. If that ever comes, it's very achievable, surely, but uh, it's a matter of if the company truly cares about exploring something like that obviously that's not really a place this like this uh, presentation is not really a place for something like that but uh, the fact that they're not mentioning it kind of tells you that uh, it, it seems like it's, it's they have a very different principle compared to Microsoft Sony spent a lot of time on 3d audio now this is something where I think a lot of people don't necessarily care about it right now because you can't hear it um, but the fact that they're talking this much about it and the amount of tools that are available to developers and how they're trying to uh, make sure there's good compatibility amongst all these different audio sources tells me that it probably is something a lot more a lot more engaging than I think most people are giving it credit for because you just can't hear it right now. 
But uh, it will be something very interesting to see once uh, people have access to PlayStation 5 and they can finally test it and give some impressions before the console comes out. I think this is a key principle that they're spending a lot of time talking about, whereas Microsoft isn't mentioning anything about audio, right? It's all about what these two manufacturers are talking about. The 10.3 teraflops, um, yeah, obviously it's less than Series X. We do have a platform that on paper uh, isn't as powerful, but what's very important here is those SSD speeds. All right now This is extremely quick extremely quick. It is much faster than well I don't want to say much faster, but it's very fast faster than series X that much We know for certain right so now you've got this balancing act um, and to be honest I'm actually quite pleased at the very least with the the fact that the SSD is so quick it seems like Sony's going to be spending much more time talking about why the SSD is important, whereas Microsoft's going to be talking about those massive performance gains. And uh, when you look at Microsoft, for example, they are catering to multiple platforms, as in they have already confirmed with their first party lineup and surely third party, because that's what happens with generational leaps, but uh, that they will be still supporting X1. Whereas you would assume with PlayStation 5, Sony's going to be moving a lot of their development a development uh, for first party to PlayStation 5 only. And considering these are going to be exclusive Sony games, this is something where we can see uh, games curated and designed around that aspect. I've been preaching that for a while now where when you get an exclusive PlayStation 5 game, particularly out of so uh, Sony's first party, games can be designed specifically around what Sony has been talking about, which is avoiding arbitrary load sections, um, doing this instantaneous fast travel. Clearly the company has uh, a lot of stock in that area and not necessarily the, perform the performance gains. And it'll be interesting to see where they land on price uh, it still sounds like a very expensive machine. If you're disappointed by 10.3, I'm telling you now, it's still going to be a very powerful platform. You're going to see some very beautiful looking games, but you might see a different type of scope of games. Uh, third party, of course, is third party. It's going to be the same across the board. Maybe third parties will go the extra mile and they'll get those faster load times, those extra speeds, but they can't do something like uh, get rid of a, uh, a corridor or get rid of this, this long um, arbitrary draw distance that you have to walk with your in-game player on PS5 and not Series X, right? It's third party. The game's going to be the same everywhere. So unfortunately, that's something where PS5 won't you know i mean you'll get maybe an instant load time instant fast travel but you're not going to get a game that can be specifically des designed around that because a third party has to cater for a multitude of platforms so that's something very important to note here but the 10.3 is still uh, fairly good and when you talk about the ssd the fact that that is going to be uh pretty much i don't want to say a bottleneck but that's going to be where sony's going to be putting a lot of their manufacturing dollars into this thing it will um i think it'll be interesting to see where they land on price if it will be 4.99 if it will be potentially less than that if they want to eat some costs remember we did hear uh, loosely that the manufacturing uh, well not the manufacturing cost but necessarily the, the the part aspect the parts of ps5 is sitting at around 450 dollars which means that they price it at 500 with including manufacturing they could sit somewhere around even maybe eat a little bit of the cost maybe even make a little bit of profit right off the bat um, also the uh, m2 drives right the ssd this is something that is principally much different from microsoft's approach where uh, technically they're well both are very proprietary keep that in mind but Microsoft partnered with Seagate it looks like you're only going to be getting uh, expandable storage from those Seagate little memory cards which actually I think look pretty cool it's almost like we really are going back to PS2 and PS1 days with those memory cards uh, even 360 had memory cards but yeah those little things right uh, Sony's openly saying we're trying to work with third parties but we have to let you know right now it may be something where there may be com there might be compatibility issues so we have to let you know a list of drives from a third party that you can purchase I think that's great news if it was completely pr proprietary it was curated uh, specifically from Sony as a manufacturer you're looking at high expandable storage prices uh, so I hope that even though SSDs are more expensive, they are much more reasonable. You know, you don't have to spend that much money. Uh, they actually note that it just connects right to their custom I.O. And that's how they, you, assuming it's a PCI 4.0 and you're getting uh, very fast uh, read speeds, um, that's where you can uh, not get uh, any performance bottlenecks in your PS5 games. But that, for the most part, is our recap and general impressions. I'm glad we finally have specs. By all means, it's gonna be a storm and conversation on the internet from here on out. I'm glad we finally have specs, so the argument's over, but now it's gonna just be getting because of course, it's, that's just how people are. Um, but 
hey, at least we have them now. Uh, in terms of an actual more consumer focused PlayStation 5 event, considering we just got this one in March, now we're looking at uh, we're, we're looking at summer for a consumer focused event, unless uh, Sony does more hands on things uh, prior to that or more details, more wire.com articles, however they wanna dull out the information. It's obviously much different this time around compared to PS4, um, but we'll be here on Friday on Let's Talk PlayStation to cover up any details that I may have missed in this video and um, anything else that Sony adds and does throughout the week, as always, on Let's Talk PlayStation. But thank you so much for watching. If you haven't yet, please subscribe for the best PlayStation news, reviews, and updates that are here on YouTube. Follow me on Twitter at Mystic Ryan. I've been tweeting a lot more lately, and that is it. I will see you all in my next video. You take it easy.